Hey friends, good morning. It's Wednesday, February 1st, and today I will be drawing the Himalayan mono bird. It's on the computer screen right behind me. It's a very beautifully colored bird. If you would like to follow along, you will need a regular pencil, just like a number two pencil, an eraser, some watercolors or gouache, brush, and colored pencils. So let's go ahead and get started. You want to find several good reference photos, and I do something called siding and measuring. So here I'm measuring the head of the bird, and then seeing how many heads it takes to make up the entire body. And this will give you an idea of how large it's going to look on your paper and get ready to sketch. So first I'm going to draw the head, and then I'm going to use my siding. So that's one head, two, three, four, five, and then a little bit. So that's about as long as my bird's going to be. I did the same thing for the body, and I know that the body is about four heads, but you should do it yourself and see how many heads you think the body is. I noticed that the back of the bird is a little bit taller than the head. So I'm bringing it up a little bit. And you can see the way that I sketch, I, I do direction lines or angles at first before I make a rounded shape. And if you think about it more simply, the head is really a little oval and then the body is one big oval. So you can certainly do it that way to make it a little bit easier for you. The point is, it's not supposed to be perfect. If you need to erase a line, erase a line. But don't worry about making it look exactly like that bird because you never want to copy someone's photo reference exactly. You always want it to be a little bit different because you want it to be your work, not their work. So that's why I usually draw from several different photos instead of one main photo. And I don't try to get the feathers or the color exactly like the photos that I'm looking at. Oh, I always try to exaggerate a little bit. Right now I'm just blocking in where each color section is because if you look at the bird, it has a orangey red section, a greenish section, a purpley section. There's lots of colors in this bird. I'm going to put the eyeball in and I just do a simple circle. I don't try to make it look exactly like that eyeball. I'm just doing a circle and then I'm drawing a little bit of where the blue is around the eye so I don't forget to do that. Next I'm doing a little swoosh and finally I'll do the beak here on the head. And then that will finish up the head. And let's move on to the feet. Bird feet are really weird. They are, they always end up looking a little, a little off. So just do the best you can. You can make them kind of look like, you know, they, they have the basic leg and these feet look somewhat like a turkey. It must be in the turkey family. I haven't researched them that much, but thinking it must be in the turkey family because their leg part is a little wider and then you come off to the three toes. They probably have a toe on the back, but I can't see. I'm just assuming. We might come back and put some grass around the bottom of the feet to kind of hide them a little bit. There you go. Okay, now let's work on our color palette for this bird. I'm using the Kuretake Japanese watercolor gouache paints. I've been eyeing them for a while and I saw an illustrator on Instagram. Her handle is Monkey Mentaka. I saw her using them and I was inspired to get some to try out for myself. These are pre-poured into these little bowls, paint, so you can get it wet to activate it. And then when it dries, it's just right there, ready to go when you're ready to use it. I'm really loving them so far because they can behave like watercolor so you get a more translucent effect 
but they also can behave like gouache if you add a little more pigment and they look more opaque which I think is really cool right now I'm just working on the cools and let's see what warm colors we have in our Himalayan Monal bird I tested out all of these colors ahead of time the entire color set in this palette on a piece of paper in my sketchbook because the names of them are in Japanese and I don't know how to read Japanese characters so I actually tested them all out in my sketchbook and I have the names of all of these colors so I'm using cadmium orange cadmium scarlet alizarin crimson um, rose matter deep is that darker red actually not alizarin crimson and then malachite ultramarine pale ultramarine cerulean that kind of greenish color is turquoise blue and I am using a little bit of black when you get started you want to pre moisten your paper so right now I'm just putting clear water just right inside the bird where I'm gonna paint so like the whole body you can do the head you can do the tail don't worry about the colors bleeding because I think that's a really cool effect and you're going to be layering on top of it so it doesn't really matter if the colors kind of bleed together that's what watercolor and gouache likes to do so kind of let the medium do what it wants to do all right after it is pre-moistened I take my lightest blue color and I'm just gonna fill the majority of the bird. I'm paying attention to where I'm going. I don't want to put the blue where the orangey colors are because that'll kind of make a gray when they mix. I just want them to sort of mix on the edge. And so I'm being mindful of that. And the blue color that I'm using is ultramarine pale. It looks like it actually has a little bit of white in it to make it that lighter blue color. All right, you, you might notice I moved to a smaller brush to get these green sections in, and the green color that I'm using is Malachite. It's a really pretty blue-green. Now we're going into our warmer sections and I'm using cadmium orange. Also putting it for the tail. And after you do this first layer, you have to let it dry completely. So you might want to keep a hair dryer handy or you can just let that one layer dry, go do something else, then you can come back because when we put our next layer on, we want it, this layer to be completely dry. Now I'm just putting some more of that green in there. Let's do the little swoosh. So what do you think? you think these are related to the peacock or a turkey? They really look like a mix between a peacock and a turkey. The little swoosh reminds me of the uh, California quail. And 
Now I'm just putting a little bit of ultramarine blue. For this darker section, I'm using ultramarine blue and I am going to mix a little bit of black in with it. You can also use indigo if you don't want to go with black. That might be something I might layer on top of it. You kind of have to test it out and see how you feel. Um, but if you just have a basic watercolor palette, I would say go with ultramarine blue and a little bit of black because black goes a long way. But you want to make what's called a shade. And that would be adding a little bit of black to it. This is the black, and I actually mixed a little bit of black in with my ultramarine blue on my separate palette, not in my Kuretake palette. And that just gives me a little bit of a darker shade. That sound that you hear is just me dipping my brush in water and then just activating the paint with my brush. Here I'm using a little bit of that cadmium orange with some ultramarine blue to make sort of a gray for the feet. And we're going to let this dry and then we'll do the next layer. And I just sped up this step so you can see how I block in each color again. And, and you don't have to do it this quickly, obviously. I've sped this up so that we can move on to the next step. But we're basically just doing the same thing. I'm just adding a little more pigment and I added a little purple this time. I did want to add something under the bird, so first I pre-moistened the paper, then I added that lighter green, then I used the indigo blue to put a little bit of a shadow under the bird, and then finally I used a little bit of iridium to have some darker greens in the grass. Let that dry. Okay, now let's add some colored pencil marks. I'm using a light blue to just put in some of the light blue feathers that I see around the eye. And I'm just gonna kind of keep going, just lightly shading little bits of color here and there. Just adding some details here or there. I put the eye and then I put some details in the mouth. And I'm actually layering the light blue on top of it because I thought it was a little bit too dark. Now I'm going in with the blue in a few areas where I see hints of lighter blue and the plumage on the wing. And again, this is not photorealism, so please don't try to be perfect. Please don't try to make exactly what you see in the photo. You want it to be more expressive. This is a very colorful bird, so let's have a little bit of fun with it.
And now I'm adding a little bit of shade with my darker blue pencil to the underside. I'm not going to shade the whole thing because when I'm looking at the picture, I do see it a little bit lighter on that left side. Just getting in there, kind of working on the, the line of the purple and see how I turn my pencil to the side. You can get, you can cover more area if you use your, the side of your pencil rather than the point when you're shading. And now I'm just going along the edge, cleaning everything up a little bit. putting in a little purple shading because I did see a lot of purple and now I'm kind of paying attention to the shapes of the feathers and where I see blue and purple and just adding some fun little shapes in there And to blend the colors, you can add a lighter blue on top of the purple. You just press down a little bit harder and it actually blends your colors together. And sometimes I'll take a white and layer it on top for some lighter blending. You can also use a clear blending colored pencil. Okay, now I'll take my light gray and I'll put a few details on the feet. Add a little details to the grassy area, like a few sprigs here or there. Then I'm going to work into the warm areas a little bit on the bird and add some yellows and some reds. red really made it pop look at that and let's put some details on this little sprig that uh, is coming off of his head and anywhere else where you see that you might need to add a little bit of definition any more texture you can just add it now here or there 